Stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping at the Hollywood Museum in the historic Max Factor building where all the stars got their hair changed and their makeup done, and it's a great place. And our guests waiting to be profiled are filmmaker Seth Grossman and actress Carolyn Hennessy. Writer, director, producer, Seth Grossman is a graduate of Princeton University and New York University's film program. His short film, Shock Act, won Best Narrative in the 2004 Tribeca Film Festival. He wrote and directed it. He also wrote The Elephant King, starring Ellen Burstyn, among other films. And my fave, fave, favorite film of all time, you co-wrote, A Late Quartet. That's I right. loved it so much. Well, thank you. Uh, I can't wait to talk to you about it. But let's uh, talk about the equally haunting, but in a different way, Inner Demons. That, I thought that was very interesting. Well. Let's go on. When not making films, <laughs> Seth is directing and producing A&E's Emmy-winning docudrama, um, Interventions. So when you were in school, did you always want to be a filmmaker? Did you go to, when you were in Princeton? No, when I was at Princeton, I wanted to be a writer. Oh, you uh, did? Yeah, yeah. I, I started um, writing poetry and short stories when I was around 15 or 16. And at Princeton, I, I specialized in creative writing. And I wanted to be a novelist. And oh, but you couldn't have made as much money as you're making a film. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. It, it, I haven't made that much money in film either. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? But, uh, but I like the collaborative nature of filmmaking. And I was working on novels for a long time. And I just wanted to get out of my study and, and be with people and work with actors. Where were you when you were 15? Uh, Durham, North Carolina. You were? Right, So yeah. you were born and raised there? Born and raised in oh, Durham, you, North Carolina. You know yep. what? You were born on September 19th. That's right. Same day as my husband. Oh, wow. So um, when you were in Princeton, you were being you were going to be a writer. I was a writer. Yeah, I was I was writing stories. I wrote a novel as my th senior thesis at Princeton and I wrote for the weekly culture magazine, art reviews, movie reviews, things like that. But but that kind of goes back to what you're doing like the narrative. You mm -hmm. love telling stories, Absolutely. right? So that yeah. really falls into what you're doing. Absolutely. I mean, I think that um, filmmaking for me is an extension of writing. It's it's telling a story, it's taking characters from one place to another place. Um, so I do think that the, you know it's it's different to be a writer director than to just direct somebody else's oh, work. Oh, why is it? Well, I feel like as a writer director, you have a vision from the beginning that you know you can see the way the characters are going to move through space. You can see the you know you can hear the sound of their lines when you write them. But maybe you're too close to yeah. direct it. Yeah. So maybe sometimes maybe it's better to have someone else come in and direct. Well, it. that's well that happened with both a late quartet and inner demons. Oh, it did? Uh, well, Inner Demons, I, I inherited the script from a great writer named Glenn Gares. Oh. And with the late quartet, I wrote the script with the director, Yaron Zilberman. So both of those projects were the writer, it wasn't just a writer director. So you were having this collaboration, which yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Well, talk, talk about a, a late quartet, which happened to be my favorite movie. And you worked with Philip Seymour Hoffman. Right. And, yeah. and you can tell me about his. Not his character, but him well, as an actor. I can't tell you that much about him because as a writer, I wasn't on set working with him. Um, you know, oh, I, you were writing. You didn't get to direct I didn't direct that, that one, ah. no. What happened with The Late Quartet is Yaron Zilberman is a friend of mine, and his, uh, his wife, Tamar, produced my first movie, The Elephant King. And so mm. he came to me and said, I want to make a movie about a string quartet. 
And I said, okay, let's write it. And so we would sit down together every day in his apartment on the Upper West Side, and we would just throw out ideas and, and, and throw out references. We wanted something that resembled King Lear to an extent. But how did you know about quartets? Are you a musician? No, Yaron is a musician. He knows all about quartets. And then, and but what, what was your adding I, I to it? I know it? about drama. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know, so you know about how families. To write, I know right? how to write. Oh, yeah, I got this it. was I got it. this was his first foray into fictional filmmaking. He had just done a documentary, uh -huh. so I came on board as a more experienced writer and said, "Well, we can take this idea of a of a group of musicians and turn it into a sort of fractured family drama." And, uh, and we went from there. Which it was. Mm -hmm. Fractured family. So did you ever go on the set? Uh, I was never on the set for that. You never were? No. But no. then how, when, when the final thing, well then did you know, did you help cast it? Um, not really. I mean, I basically just wrote with him and then uh -huh. I was on to other jobs oh, and he was making this movie and I mean, I was always in the loop. He would tell me, oh, Catherine Keener has agreed to do it and I would be excited about that. Philip Seymour Hoffman has agreed to do it. That's great. Um, Who else I, was in it? Christopher Walken was in it. Oh, right. Who I met at the uh, Toronto Film Festival when we had the premiere. So, had he already been in your film? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh when, you met, when you had the premiere uh, the, the of this? The premiere of A Late Quartet was at Toronto. Oh, great. And my wife and I went up there, and it was a lot of fun, and we celebrated with the cast and crew. Oh, so you did get to so meet I them afterwards. So I did get to meet them, but yeah. Philip Seymour Hoffman wasn't there. And I have met Philip Seymour Hoffman once. He came to NYU, and he gave a talk to the students, and I talked to him a little bit afterwards, and he <coughs> was such an incredibly smart, vulnerable, interesting actor. I mean, really just left it all on the table when he was, when he was in front of the camera and on stage. But he was really interested in the theater besides film because yeah, I would see him at the uh, Music Center downtown going to many different theaters. Mm -hmm. And amazing on stage. Death yeah, of a I used to see him on stage too in New York, mm -hmm. which was great. And he directed a play actually that Ellen Burstyn was in that I went to see, The Little Flower of East Orange, that played down at oh, the I public. Oh, I did. Right, yeah, I saw it at yeah. the public with Michael Shannon. <coughs> Michael Shannon, right. And then did, you didn't get Ellen Burstyn from that. No, no, or you I got knew Ellen her before. Burstyn before uh, <coughs> when we were casting Elephant King in 2004. Um, our casting director Cassandra Kulakundis had a relationship with her and. Uh, I remember, I'll never forget, I was in Chiang Mai, Thailand. It was about 2 or 3 in the morning. I was in Chiang Mai, too. Oh, yeah? Okay, maybe we crossed paths. <laughs> um, so it's 2 or 3 in the morning. I know it's like, uh, you know, 2 or 3 in the afternoon, New York time. Mm -hmm. And I knew that Ellen had gotten the script and she had read the script. <laughs> so I call her up. I'm, you know, I'm exhausted. It's been a full day of shooting. We already started oh, you production. Were shooting. We'd already started production in Thailand. <laughs> we hadn't come back to the U.S. to, to shoot the New York side of the story, oh. and I wanted Ellen Burstyn to play this major role in the movie, so I, I asked her, so Ellen, are you going to do it? And she said, yeah, I guess I'll do it. And I was so excited I couldn't fall back to sleep. I just the Elephant King, it. because when you're in Chiang Mai, all you do is see elephants. Right, they're right. taking baths and they're walking around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I just got it. Yeah. Good place to film. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> beautiful place to film. Beautiful. Okay, let uh, take me to Inner Demons. Okay, so because Inner... Because Inner Demons was like... Am I going to like this film? And then you just get, like, hooked. Yeah, what did you like about it? I, I don't know. It was just like, it was real. Yeah, yeah, the texture, the And the, the, performances. Kid, the performances were very real. And I kept thinking, are they really actors? Right, yeah, because so, they're pretty unknown. Because it's like a docu, kind of like a documentary, mm -hmm. would you say? Yeah. It's because a, you do docudrama. What is right, that? exactly. Reality TV. Is that it? Do yeah. you change it? Do you write it? I produce it. Yeah. No, but I mean, do they, on a docudrama, rewrite, do they write the, the, the way they want the story to go? Uh, it depends on the show that you're doing. Um, the show that I worked on before I did Inner <laughs> Demons was called Intervention. Right. And it's about, it's about addiction, and it's about uh, families who want to intervene upon an, an addicted relative to save their lives. And so we don't really script any of that. I mean, there's enough innate drama in the life of an addict that you don't really have to... You mean you d used real people all Oh, the sure, time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what happened in this Inner Demons. Mm -hmm. It looked like somebody knew what they were doing, and that's why I thought, is it really someone from... I don't know where, what they call it, up in Malibu, those places. Oh, yeah, the, one of those detox centers one of those or detox. Re rehab yeah, centers. Yeah, is it really yeah. from there or yeah. where? So uh, you knew how to do that. Right, right. No, I'd done eight episodes of Intervention, so I'd seen everything from, <laughs> you know, late-stage alcoholics to methamphetamine addicts to heroin addicts living in the streets. 
So that definitely informed the texture and the kinds of characters that, uh, that we worked with in that movie. But you brought a lot of, you brought the exorcist into it. Right, yeah. I mean, I'm so gratified that you liked it so much. That's I know, great. I was like, I'm, like, I'm so not going to like this. I, I, because you go in like going, oh, this is a horror movie, I don't care. Right, right. I mean, I didn't set out to make a horror movie that was blood and guts and chainsaws. No. I wanted to make something about what's really scary about human relationships. And which it is was. abuse and insanity and... And, <sighs> and the way you end it where the poor girl had gone through so many things that we didn't know about right right yeah <laughs> anyway it was really well where did you uh where was your location um we shot the house in westchester we shot the um the rehab facility westchester just down the, by the airport home oh, of LAX. Westchester, yeah california yeah, yeah just down lax area we actually shot so robin shore is the producer she's a fantastic producer really made the movie happen, and we shot on the same block that she grew up on. Oh, so she yeah. knew what it was. Yeah, she knew the area. It was very 50s. Exactly, exactly. So we shot there, and then we shot... The rehab facility is actually um, the Brandeis um, Jewish American campus. So it's Where is a, that? It's up near the Simi <coughs> Valley. Oh. Um, so it, it had a lot of different facilities that we could use to make look like a rehab center. Because it looked... I thought maybe it was one of those places up in Malibu. Yeah, Because yeah. it was like... It, craftsman house. Right, right. It was very nice. Yeah, it had that great look of the it big did. boulders right. and the earth tones, very calming. It was great. Yeah. And how yeah. long did it take you to shoot it? So we shot that in 15 days. Um, did you rehearse a lot? We rehearsed a lot, yeah. I got together with the actors a like lot. It doesn't look like it at all. It looks like you just went for it. It's perfect. Right, right. Thank you. Yeah, we, we definitely rehearsed the hell out of those scenes and made sure that the actors knew where they were coming from. And it was a really incredible open process working with them. I mean, we all just, we talked about our real issues and I'm the kind of director that I like to, I like to get in there and I like to, you know, dig Hear into the guts said? of a person. I, I mean, I don't want them to just <clears throat> use technique to create a performance. I want them to use their real experience and emotions. So, you know, it's sort of a method version of directing, but I really, uh, you know, and then we used real addicts at the uh, this the scenes where those people were. You remember that woman? <laughs> yes. The, who's like, uh, I I'm an alcoholic and I have to be here to get my social security or something right, like that. Yeah. yeah. And, they, so you used real people for that? Yeah, real people. We just put out a call on Craigslist and. Uh, yeah. And then how long? Fifteen days. Fifteen days of shooting, and then we were in post production for I don't know a year or something like that. Oh, it was. Yeah. And then how'd you get the cast members? Um, the, the, the actual the, actors. The actors were, they came from a lot of different directions. We had a really great um, casting director named Ricky Maslar. And then um, I do an acting class that I go to sometimes <laughs> with this acting teacher named Catelyn Adams. And she was recommended by Ellen Burstyn when I first moved to L.A. Uh. She said, take Catelyn's class. So I went to the class before we started casting the, uh, the movie so that I could get my sea legs again. And there was a woman in the class... Um, named Kate Whitney, who is also a director, who was doing a scene because sometimes actors take this class and do scenes. And I said, oh, my God, she's amazing. Oh. So we cast her as the director of the show. Oh, and she was great. Yeah, right? She was really... <laughs> like, so mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tough. Well, everyone has to go out and see it. I hope they do. I don't want to say any more about it because it was great. Thank and you. I love your work. Thank you so much. This no. has been really fun. Seth, yeah. thank you. Honor to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. And thank you for watching. We're going to be right back with Carolyn Hennessy. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're here at the Hollywood Museum in our little studio of the historic Max Factor building. And I'm here with Emmy Award nominated actress, author, Carolyn Hennessy, who was born and raised in Los Angeles, graduated from Taft High School, earned a scholarship to Cal State Northridge, and then trained at ACT and the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London. Carolyn studied at the Groundlings, became a member of the Sunday Company, and was a founding member of the female improv troupe at the Acme Theater. Did well, you? Well, actually, actually, uh, <coughs> uh, the female improv troupe was called Overreaction. Oh, it was. Get it? <coughs> yeah. Overreaction. <coughs> oh and, my God. Uh, yeah, but I was also uh, a member of the main company at the, which was a different, uh, different time. Uh, of Acme Comedy Theater, yes. The so you were, well, you're, you're, you're an old standby at yeah, Acme. Yeah, I'm just, it's, uh, you know. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm one of the pillars. All right. She's been on the 
best stages across the United States, played great TV roles on True Blood, uh, General Hospital, Cougar, and the Disney Channels. Disney Channel, yeah. Jesse. Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of roles were those? Oh, they were all. <laughs> 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 oh. Well, I like to think that the running theme throughout all of them is a, some sass, some wit, some brains, um, a lot of sex appeal. Oh. I, I, I flatter myself. Um, but uh, Diane Miller on General Hospital is a very smart and sassy attorney. Um, Cougar Town Barb is, was a, very, very quickly, the only cougar on Cougar Town. And, uh, and, uh, the real life cougar. Yes, and she was just, again, you know, sort of the great one-liners, uh, oh. which, which, all of which sort of overlays uh, a little marshmallow, in, marshmallow interior. So, Talking about that, the great one-liners, and you were, you were talking, a pillar of yes, the acme you know, you know. and the improv and all that. <laughs> Did you do any ad-libbing in that role? Um, what we were allowed to do, what I was allowed to do on Cougar Town is uh, get one in the can, one in the can as written, and ah. then very often, depending <coughs> on the director, we, I could play. We could all <coughs> play just a little bit, and so but, that was so much fun. But I bet it was because you come from that improv sure. background. Mm -hmm. So what about True Blood? Oh well, you were a tramp, vamp, tramp, <laughs> tramp, I was, vamp. I, I was, I was a tramp, vamp. <coughs> um, one of the oldest vampires, supposedly, you know, in the world, a member of the Vampire Authority. The oh, Texas, you were the Texas-born Rosalind Harris, and uh, with dressed like you know Barbara Bush with hair, hair up to God and pearls and fangs and perfect. And, yes, exactly. So she was she was a tremendous amount of fun. And and Jesse, Jesse again. I play uh, the love to hater Mrs. Chesterfield. I'm the. It's a it's a show for uh, for kids and it's, yes, it's, right. it's it's the number one I believe it's the number one rated show on on Disney you know the Disney, Disney Family Channel, Channel. Yeah. yeah and I am the downstairs neighbor I'm the nemesis you're the I'm the nemesis do you the, come over and needle of everyone of course of course and then you you know the you always get the comeuppance at the end and the kids are the kids are triumphant and Mrs Chesterfield goes sulking off into the she corner takes somewhere. Her tail. <laughs> She takes her dog Zeus and <laughs> yeah. her big fancy hats, and she goes off and she sulks. And how do you feel about that? Love it. You love, love it. it. I love it. Do you like to sulk? You know what? <coughs> Listen, as I, with all of these characters, there's all there's a little bit of snark to all of them, but the snake gets the best lines and the best shoes. That's I think it. so too. And if that's you it. feel like it, and if you feel like that's what you want, it, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Well, that's especially when you know they kind of. And they, sometimes they will. They will pull back the layers on some of these characters and reveal the soft, you know. Oh, you don't like that, do you? <laughs> no, not at all. No, I don't want to be soft <laughs> and light. <laughs> so one thing that you do call yourself, besides all these other things, is you were a studio brat. Yeah. Was there, why did you say that about yourself? Because my father <laughs> was a, a production designer, and I grew up going to studio after studio. He was an Academy Award winning production designer. Oh, he so was. So I'm actually the only person that I personally know <laughs> who has rehearsed her Academy Award speech holding an Oscar. And watching, watching, of watching, course, watching. Of course, and uh, 20th Century Fox, Paramount, MGM, you name it. My father worked at all of these places, and so I would go and visit him, especially because we, I was raised in Encino. And when he was at Warner Brothers, I would go all the time to visit him and just spend hours on these, these big, magical dark rooms. And what did he do, actually? What kind of set did he build? He, well, he won his Academy <coughs> Award for Fantastic Voyage. Oh, yeah. and big he, sets. Huge. Uh, Young Frankenstein, King Kong, the one with Jessica Lange. Um, oh, let's see, the competition, wow. Dirty Harry, Logan's oh. Run. So, you, so you've been a part of showbiz all your life. I have indeed. I have indeed. And I've seen it, <coughs> I've seen it from a very, very interesting perspective because my father was behind the camera. I have an aunt, Barbara Rush, as you know, who is in, was in front of the camera. So yeah. I was able to get kind of a you know, the, the full deal, the full banquet, to be able to say, yes, this is what I choose to do. Yeah, you were lucky. Very. And, and you're in front of the camera mm -hmm. and on, t on radio, mm -hmm. and your cousin, I guess she is, Claudia My Cohen? Cousin, Claudia Cowan, yes, yeah, she's, uh, she's a newscaster. Cowan? Yeah. I should yeah. say Cowan. Yeah. Yeah. Rogers and <laughs> Rogers Cowan. Rogers and Cowan. Yes. The big. Yeah, the, very the good. The big PR firm. 
And she's still behind the camera, right? She is. Or in front of the camera, I should I believe say. she is. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is yeah. in San Francisco because mm -hmm. I saw her the other day. There you go. So, there you go. so it comes in from all different angles. Yeah, it's, what's interesting <clears throat> is that I actually knew from a very, very early age, though, truly from the very first time that I walked onto a soundstage. And I, and I didn't know, I, was, I think I was four. And it was Fantastic Voyage. It was this. It was a set. Oh, Fantastic that was the set your father. And I didn't know. Of course, you don't. You're not cognizant of really what goes on there. But I knew it's like a wave washed over me. And I said, whatever <coughs> happens here, I'm going to be a part of it. Did you start? Were you in school plays? School plays, absolutely. Oh, you yeah. were. Yeah, Did yeah, you yeah. take dancing, singing? Dancing, singing, the whole thing. You name it. Um, kept studying, studying, studying. I was at the Teenage Drama Workshop at Cal State Northridge. I have friends now whose children are going to that now. And when you um, went to London, did uh, you choose to go there? Mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. to Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And did you have, do you have to audition to get in there? You do. Mm -hmm. So you had already had a well, part of a life. Yeah, but I'd, st I'd studied and I, people say, well, now were you a child actor? It's like, no, I wasn't a child actor. I knew I wanted to be right. an actor. So right. I went the route of Study, 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 study. You do, you play all these roles that we talked about, mm -hmm. and um, you're on the stage all the time. Mm -hmm. And how do you have time to write books? Because you, <laughs> I called you an author in the it's introduction. It's, and I do. I have a series of seven mm. novels for children. Uh, for, for children, yeah, that's for so ages, great. Ages eight to thirteen. Actually, I say eight and up because I've got you know I've got every from all ages who love it, and I'm also a best-selling uh, New York Times best-selling author uh, with a book called The Secret Life of Damien Spinelli, and how I have oh, time that's to what write. You, but that's a, is, that's not a novel. It is. It's a, yes. It's Damien's, a fictional. Life. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, the powers that be at uh, Disney, ABC Disney. They came to me and said, we would like you to write oh. a fictionalized account of all the characters on the canvas at the time in uh, Port Charles in General Hospital. Oh, so that's, that's how it happened? Yes, yes. Oh, that's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And how I have time is <coughs> I'm not on General Hospital every day. And, you know, True Blood was filming sporadically here and there, even though I was under contract to them. Uh, and so writing... Writing and comes. It's, it's, a, it's a fully packed life. And how do you write? <laughs> on a computer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where do the ideas come from? This is a series, so it, is it like a storyline? The series of novels for young adults is a retelling of the classical Greek myth of Pandora. It is Pandora. Yeah. That's like that. So yeah. each book is different. Each book is different. Pandora is a thirteen-year-old girl in my in my <coughs> in my series, and uh, she finds the box of evil. She knows what it is. She knows she's not supposed to think about it but she decides to take it to school for a big school project because she's procrastinated. Naturally, all hell breaks loose. And that and sounds like you, yes, right? Exactly. Coming up and with all this that's stuff. That's right, and she has to go, and she has to get every single thing that got out of the box back in the box. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That covers a lot. It's, uh, it's um, uh, Harry Potter for girls with the togas and really cool tools. I can see why yeah. it was on the New York bestseller list. The, uh, yeah, that was The Secret Life of Damien Spinelli. That but, was... But these could be could there Could easily, as well. absolutely. <laughs> could easily. What about your an, an, um, animal rights action? Well, it's a, I'm an animal advocate, and uh, I have a radio show called Animal Magnetism, which What's is... What's the difference between, between activist, an activist and, and, and an advocate? Yeah. What an do you activist, do? Um, <laughs> is is well, I'm going to speak in generalities here. Okay. Okay. Um, <coughs> much more radical in their thinking. Um, a lot of the activists I know want all of the animals freed. They would like to see them perhaps roaming the streets, uh, and all of us walking hand in hand in in harmony with the animals. And that's simply not going to happen. Um, and what do you advo think? Advocacy. Uh, understands the the need these days oh, for zoos, say, uh, aquariums, modern zoos and aquariums, and the lessons that we can learn from them, the fact that we have now polluted so much of our planet, and we need to actually understand how to better care for the animals that are in our care. It's really different, isn't it? Much. What you're talking much. about. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah. There um, is a diversity. Yeah. Basically, activists <coughs> uh, do not appreciate any animal in captivity at all. I see. And I see. advocates understand the need for the animals that are in our care 
why they are in our care, they need to be in our care, and how we can best serve them, and as and and in serving them, serve the animals that are that are now in the wild. They're I also see. In the wild, so. I see, and it, and that's a very good point. And you make that on your radio show, All the time. and you. All but the time. before we go, we have to talk about meet and greet. Meet and greet. The play. It's. it's um, I have done as. You said I've done a lot of theater in my lifetime. Yes. In my rather long lifetime. Um, and this is without question, without question, the funniest play <laughs> I have ever done in my life. I've read a lot of funny stuff. It's the funniest thing I've ever read. It's the funniest thing I've ever done. It's called Meet and Greet. It's part of the Hollywood Fringe Festival. I know. The Hollywood it's Fringe it, Festival is so great. And it's Stan Zimmerman, Stan did he Zimmerman, write it? He, he and Christian McLaughlin co-wrote it. Co -wrote right. it. Stan Zimmerman directed it. Uh, They're producing it. And there are only four more performances. Go on uh, the uh, Hollywood Fringe Festival website. <clears throat> but it's, it's four disparate actresses. Yeah, talk about them. Um, there is the uh, reality show star from the Real House Housekeepers of Miami. There is the Broadway legend. There are there are there's the woman who's kind of the bipolar slash <laughs> Margot Kidder, uh, full oh. full tilt crazy. <coughs> and then there is the woman who's sort of a bubbly blonde uh, who now can only sell her th products on QVC. And then there's a casting assistant. Oh, the At pilot season, we are all testing for the same role. On the on a, on a really really bad pilot, and the and the shenanigans ensue, and it's it's a one you, guy, it's, right? The gay casting director, the, 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 little, the little gay casting. How director. does he get along with these women? He, well, you should, well he he <laughs> he wrangles us like cats. Does he? Yes, and we uh, and we allow ourselves to be wrangled, and there's a very very funny twist at the end, but it's leading up to literally from start to finish. It's one of those plays. I had an incredible compliment on our opening night. This is to me the best thing you can say because I have experienced this. People say, I didn't want to laugh for fear of missing the next thing that was being said on stage. Oh, and because that's because 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 it's all there is not a there's just not a, a, a dropped moment. I bet Stan Zimmerman loved that. Didn't want to miss a step. No, it's like it's like you literally want to sit on your hands. You want to you want to just scream with laughter, but you have to sit on your hands and keep your mouth shut because the next thing that's coming, is, you don't want it. You don't want to you don't want to miss it. What's your role? I am the Broadway legend, Margot Jane Marsden. Oh, you are. Yes. And what do you do? And oh, you absolutely. think you should have the role? Oh, well, naturally. I mean, if it's going to come down to talent. <laughs> and how do you guys get along on stage? Yeah. Oh well, no. Back, backstage, backstage. Backstage. It's it's a love fest. Did you all my, know each other? No. No. <gasps> I I knew Teresa Ganzel. Uh huh. Uh, myself, Vicky Lewis, Danielle Gaither, and and uh, Paul Iacono, who is, and it's just now this sort of nucleus of love. Because Stan, <laughs> I interviewed Stan Zimmerman, and he said these are the best actresses in Hollywood. I have the best cast. Well, I'm just not <laughs> going to say no. I mean, I'm not going to dispute that, you know. And is that how Margot talks all the time? <laughs> Absolutely. And She's what like, kind of costume do you wear? Oh, it's just, it's very chic. It's very New York. Oh. Very New York. Extremely New York. It's just, it's just, it's, you know, very sort of monotone with a few jewels and, uh, and <laughs> fabulous hair. So there you go. Well, we want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you very much. A couple of days ago. And we want to thank. He's the, the, who, this. Who is this person? This who has is been... Peter Faulkner, the painter from London, and he painted Shazad Osman. Well, did he ever? Didn't he paint him well? It's, I feel like I've just like this whole this whole interview has been blanketed with, with you know, it's power. It's been power. Power, power interview. And I think you were. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Lovely to meet you. And I can't tell you how much I love the hair. Thank you, the Carolyn. The hair, the jewels, I just, I want to be here. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, people, for watching the Joan <laughs> Quinn Profiles. Write to J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1 at AOL.com. See you next time.